Ohana, you are playing Portobello, the Orphan Street Hamster. Hello, I'm Portobello, and I am this much old. He's holding up three fingers. And I'm always hungry, and my favorite foods is tater cakes, puddings, and biscuits, and jams. And I have big cheeks, and I call them my buckets. My left bucket, it's on this side of my face. It keeps my special things like my mom's bonnet, and my toothbrush, and my spoon. And my right bucket holds me extra food if I has a lucky day. So that's, that's Portobello. That's who he is as a person. He's very young. And um, his mom, named Porcina, mysteriously disappeared from his life about a year ago. And since then, Portobello has learned how to take care of himself, or at least keep himself alive and entertained. He lives in the back closet of a very old badger that goes by Mister. And Mister lets him stay there as long as Portobello clips his toe claws for him once a week. And this is sort of gross, but the, the whole thing is made grosser because Mister insists on poorly singing old worker hymns the whole time. So that's, th that's his living situation. Would you like to hear about his day-to-day? -day? I would love to hear about his day-to-day. -day. All right, so Portobello wakes up in that back closet, and basically he goes out and scavenges for food, pickpockets, hangs out with the other neighborhood orphan kiddos, and he likes to have fun, and he likes to get up to naughty things with his friends. Um, he has a slingshot, and he is... His number one motivation is his hunger. He really likes sugary treats and um, food in general. All right, so let's say you're on the street hanging out with your orphan friends, of course, the other youngins, and your friend Bungo, the shrew, walks up to you and he, he says, Portobello, I got the best tip that there ever was in culinary history I did. Uh, what's that? So, Chef Spike, she... No, she no, 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 no. What's culinary? That's, that's food, Portobello. It's our favorite. Oh, oh, it's my favorite. All right. Right. What, what kind of uh, culinary's news? Chef Spike, the... The good, the big lady that makes us all our food, she dropped the keys, and guess who picked them up? I did. I got the keys right here. And Bungo holds up some keys and, and shakes them a little bit, makes a little bit of a clinking sound. Jumping Jehoshaphat's, Bungo. How'd you come across those? You just picked them up or what? Well, I told you, she dropped them. And I picked them up. But anyways, they go to the food storage. So all the ingredients that people come and bring in order for Chef Spike to make them a meal, we can just walk right in and get all the food we want. The bloody goose... goose beak. <laughs> That's the best news I've heard since um, I heard that sliced... Slicing bread was happening. Um, all right, so let's let's go. Let's go. Um, me and you, we're not going to tell no one so that we can eat all of it all by ourselves. Okay, you guys make it over to the culinary center, which is the <laughs> largest district within Mossflower City, which is where you live. And yes, so you live in Mossflower City, and the biggest section is the culinary center which is where Chef Namora Spike will cook for everybody in the city every day. And the cost of entrance is just one ingredient. So that's basically how you make sure that you stay alive. You can bring one thing, no matter what it is, whatever you find or steal, you can get a full-fledged meal as long as you bring 
one thing to Chef Spike. But you've been down on your luck so far today, and you know what? Bungo came up with the deal of a lifetime, so you're just gonna waltz right in, and you walk. I'd say saunter. It's, I'm sure what Portobello does. Just kind of, he's got some swag to him. Yeah, uh, he has a, <laughs> yeah, he has a little wobble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and you and Bungo walk up to the door, and I want you to roll burglary. And keep in mind that since this is our first session, you can invoke an aspect in order to raise that if you want. You're just trying to make sure that you get the right... Because there's like 20 keys on this, and you're trying to make sure that you get the first key on the first try. Right. Okay, so I, I mean, I rolled a three. A three does it, and you don't get it on the first try, but you do get it on the third. So you try the first one... And you're like, dang it! And then the next one, it doesn't work either. But then on the third one, unlocks right up. And you and Bungo have hit the mother load. (gasps) There's loads in here, Bungo! I know! Look, it's my favorite. We got potatoes. I can do so much with potatoes. Taters. Boil them. Mash them. Stick him in a stew. Well, you eat some raw. And he just goes ahead and eats a potato like it's an apple. <laughs> Bungo, that's not proper. But all right, I can... Oh, I'm sorry. You right. And he pulls out a, a bib and he puts it in his shirt and he gets out a little fork and a little knife and he starts cutting up the raw potato as he eats it. Now I'm all fancy. What? That's better. Oh, okay, wait, wait. We can't just eat this one tater right now. We need to get all of it out of here as fast as we can. We're going to take all the food? All of it? I, I've got I've as much as I can fit in my buckets, Bungo. But I don't have buckets. Well, I've got buckets, so we can at least try. And you can stuff them in your pockets, I suppose. Okay. We will definitely go with that. And that's what that's your plan of escape, is just to stick as much food in your mouth and then walk yeah. right out? Um, I think that's the best plan I've ever had in my entire life. Okay. And that's what you do. How much food can Portobello stuff into his cheeks? He can fit a, a fifth of his body weight in... In his cheeks combined. So um, this is actual science too. Yeah, real science. So you get about 20% of your body weight in that. And Bungo kind of gets some stuff into his pockets, in his pants, and in his jacket. Yeah. Now here's 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 what I went for. I went for the, the good stuff. The cheese, the, the bread rolls, and a few taters because, you know, they're high in... High in carbs, and I, I like that stuff, but I, I went a little bit fancy. So you get the high-end stuff and bungo stuffs, whatever he can, into his pockets, and then you guys just leave? Yeah. Um, but we're gonna... All right, you walk right out the door. We're, you know, head down, head down, yeah. Okay, so you walk right out of the door, and as soon as you do... The two figures that you are standing in front of are Chef Namora Spike and Nathan Rockfort, the chef and sous chef of the Culinary Center in Moss Flower City. Portobello and Bungo, are you stealing from me food, Stash? (laughs) You spit that out right now. Oh, all that food. All that food's for other people. You can't just take it yourself, Portobello. And, and Bungo turns to you, and he just goes, Run, Portobello, run! Are you running away? Are you running away? Yes, yes. Then I want you to roll athletics. So you tied with your roll of a one, 
which means that you can get what you want but at a minor cost or you get a lesser version of what you wanted so let's kind of so i'm thinking that you you start to get away but you're also trying to have a conversation with bungo at the same time and so some of the food starts falling out of your mouth while you're talking no, you guys run for a few blocks and you get into a, a back alleyway, which is your getaway. You, This is kind of one of the several places that you've set up to where you can get away as Chef Spike and Sous Chef Rockford are running after you. What is like, do you have like a Home Alone-esque booby trap or, or what as you turn into this alleyway? Oh yeah, um, so I'm going to hop on to this um, old tin, I guess, trash can, but you know, trash can in red wall time. So it's it's a rubbish, rubbish bin or <laughs> something. But I, I, I'm light enough that I, I know that they can't follow me up there and then I'm gonna hop onto a shallow rooftop and then squeeze into a chimney. Okay, that sounds very much like another athletics rule. Okay. So you're you're jumping on a trash can onto a roof and then squeezing into a chimney. Uh-huh. This is my home turf, though. This is my home turf. Okay. I mean, I feel like I can... In, I, I think I can invoke that aspect, adorable orphan street hamster. This is something that I've done before. I think that maybe street smart, not book smart, would be... Okay. Better. I roll first. Okay, yeah, that's not going to make it. Okay. So, would you like to spend a fate point to invoke an aspect of some sort? Yes. Which one? Street smart, not book smart. Okay, I think that goes without saying why that would work. So, that gives you... So, get rid of one of your fate points. Okay. And then... That will add two to your roll to make it a total of a three, which is just enough to succeed. Cool. Mm Mm-hmm. So you hop up there, and as you're hopping up there, Bungo goes, What about me? As he continues to run down because he didn't take that exit the way you did. And you get up onto the rooftop, and then you just kind of squeeze yourself into a chimney because your cheeks aren't quite as big as they were a few minutes ago. So you go down a chimney? Um, no, no, I'm I'm just squished up at the top of the, <laughs> the chimney. Okay, and then I guess to make sure that you're not seen, I want you to roll stealth, which would be easy for you because you have it at a plus four. Yeah, okay, you do, you get it. With that three, you 100% kind of sneak away into the shadows as Chef Spike and Sue Chef Rock for turn around the corner in the alleyway they have no idea that you were ever in that alleyway and they keep chasing bungo who you have completely left out to dry it's okay we we're used to that and what do you do afterwards okay well, well first i take out all the food i'm still in the chimney and i'll help myself to a delicious biscuit right there all by myself because i've been a good good boy <laughs> So I have a tasty biscuit, and then after I go, mm, the best biscuit I've ever had in my life. Then I'm going to put everything else back in my buckets, um, and I'm going to make my way to my closet, um, my home, and I'm gonna I'm gonna lay out my my food right there so that I can look at it on the shelf. Okay, as you walk through the door of mister's house because that's where you have to go through in order to get to your closet Mm -hmm. mister is sitting at his table talking to militia chief fang pierce who is a very tall rat and she looks terrifying as she's got a big old scar that goes down her neck that she won in a fight with a badger years ago and she's got a cool tattoo I don't know what it is, and you can't really see it because she's got fur, but you know underneath that fur, she's got a sick tattoo. Yeah, that's old Fang Pierce. Ah, Portobello, you're here. Good. 
I'm gonna need those keys. What? I, what keys? The ones you stole from Chef Spike to get into the the storage unit. Uh, you still no, have them. I ain't got no keys. Don't know what unit spit you're them talking out. about. What? It spit. Just look, Portobello. Spit them uh, out. Only, only if I get a biscuit. Can I have a biscuit? I'll let you keep. I'll let you keep the food. Just give me the keys back. All right, sure. I hand them over. They're dripping with my saliva. <laughs> also, I'm gonna need a favor from you. What? What's that? She pats the chair next to her for you to climb up into it. I'm in. I'm sure it's adorable as yeah. you waddle up into a full size chair. Yeah, no. Wobble is the correct word. I wobble everywhere I go. All right, Portobello. I need your expertise to get a little bit of info. On a new person in town. Wait, uh, I, I ain't got no expertise. What's that? Things that you're real good at, oh. Portobello. Like hiding and sneaking and, unfortunately, stealing. Yeah, no, I've got those. What's that? What? Okay, can you ask me the question again? I haven't asked the question. <laughs> this, is, this is the deal. I'm so confused. I need you to speak slowly for me to understand you. Um... Miss Fang Pierce, Miss. I'm gonna need you to go to this address. Right, sorry. It's 445 Cheese Lane. 445 Cheese Lane. I need you to tell me how to spell cheese. Like it's written on the paper that I just gave you. C H E E S E. Cheese. Okay. C. H three three S three. I've got it. Close enough. There's a new fellow in town. He's a mouse. He's got white fur on him. And I just need you to see if he's up to no good. You'll know what I'm you know what I'm talking about, because you're generally up to no good, but this guy may be a little bit worse and I can't just search new people. I need your help. So, you're saying that this here white mouse is a sneaky, tricksy mouse and you need proof. I'm saying I have hunches and if you get some proof, that would be nice. And you have to do this because otherwise I'm taking all the food. Okay, I've got it. I'm on it. It's good. And I'm guessing you head out? Mm, I grab a piece of cheese before I go. Okay, you get a piece mm. of cheese, and then you go to 445 Cheese Lane. So all of Cheese Lane is up against a tree near the east side of town. It's a fully grown tree, and all the houses are kind of interwoven with the roots that kind of stick out of the ground and come back down and things like that. And you walk around until you find 445 Lane, which kind of looks like if a log cabin met an apartment complex, kind of. It's completely wooden. There's no, like, stones to it or anything like that. And there are several smaller buildings kind of put together, maybe more like a condo than anything. And, yeah, it's got a garage and a front door and a second story with some windows and an angular roof with a chimney in it. How do you want to do this? Uh, Portobello doesn't have a plan. So he's going to go up and knock on the door right now. And opening the door is the white mouse. He's a regular sized mouse. He's got white fur and he's got red eyes, which is something you've never seen before, but I guess it's not that out of the ordinary. You've seen yellow eyes and green eyes and blue eyes and all kinds of things like that. No, this changes everything. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. You've got blood in your eyes. You all right? Yes, I am, young sir. Did you knock on my door just to ask me if... Well, no, but I was going to ask you if you could get the, um, I've got a sticker on my foot and I ain't got no, no tweezers. Oh, yes. But 
I just I saw you rise. Just wanted to make sure you you were all right. This one time I just got this bad infection in my eyes. They turned all pink, and um, I heard it's because I stuck my face in the toilet. Did you stick your face in one of them? I ain't good, sir. You can get infections from those. No, I did not stick my face in a toilet. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I'll take a look at that foot now, if you don't mind. And he kneels down. Oh, oh, I thank you so much, sir. And okay, well, can so can I like peek a look and can I see inside while he's kneeling down I mean, at all? Yeah, you look inside. It's unfurnished, mm -hmm. as Fang Pierce said. He's new in town. He's got like mm -hmm. a chair and a table. And there's some stairs leading to the second story. And you can see some things that were already built in, I guess, like cabinets and whatnot. My, my, sir, you've got yourself a big old place. I've never seen second stories. Not in a house. Anyway. And. Where's you from? You don't have a sticker in your foot. What? I can feel it. You you can't see it. And there's no. Is it the other foot? Mm, no, it's this one. I can I can feel it. It's I in there. Look one more time, then. Yes, I am. All right. So, where's where, yeah? Where are you from, sir? I am from the mouse colony of Cheeseville. Is where I am from. Mmm, that sounds mighty tasty. They've got houses made of cheese, no, or what? No, it just makes a lot of cheese. Is really all it is. So their foods made foods made of yes, cheese. Yes, the food is made of cheese, and the cheese is made of cheese. Okay. Well, I've got this idea. All right. So hear me out. It's um, you know how like you could put cheese in between bread. Well, what if you had bread that was made of cheese, so it's like you're sticking cheese between two cheeses? Would that be good, you think? Because I think it would be good. I think that I'm going to think about that idea as I go and get you a bandage real quick, and then this will be over. Hey, um, so can I see your, um, can I just come in? I really am curious about how it looks in here. It's so big and empty. I've just never seen so many, so much empty and stairs in one spot. Um, no. And then he closes the door. Oh, okay. And hmm. he goes and rummages around for some bandages. I check out his doorstep. It's a nice doorstep. See if I can see any, any, any clues. I'm, I'm checking it all out. <laughs> Order, okay, so you're like looking under the welcome mat and the plants. Yep. That... Looking in the bushes. Yeah. Okay. Roll notice. Ooh, a two. That's just good enough. You find a spare key. Oh, I put that in my bucket. It's underneath a rock. So I take out the key and I... In like, yeah, in in the most obvious place where you'd find a spare key. Okay. So mm -hmm. I take the key and I put it in my mouth. Cool. And he comes back and he opens up the door. And he says, here, this should... This should uh, help you feel better. And he wraps up your foot quite quickly. Thanks, sir. And he says... It was very nice meeting you, Bungo. And then... I appreciate it. Did you say your name was Bungo at the beginning of this uh, one? Oh, yeah, sure did. Just, you know, okay, trying good. to keep it undercover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he closes the door as he says, Good luck with the bread cheese idea. It sounds... interesting. And then the door closes. All right. I skip off, and I'm going to go give that key to uh, Fang Pierce. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you just walk up, and you... So you go back, I guess you go to the local barracks where the militia tends to hang out, uh -huh. and you try to go find Captain Fang Pierce. Yeah, I've, I've got something to report to Fang Pierce. Wink, wink. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I tell the guys out front. And it's like, <laughs> all right, send send him in. Send him Bordello. Thank you, sir. Give him a little high five, even though his hand, hand wasn't out for him. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, you weren't gone very long. Oh. oh, yeah. Okay, so here's a scoop. A real nice guy. He he bent down and tried to get the sticker out my foot. There ain't no sticker. It was all a, it was all a phony. So anyway, he was getting the sticker out my, my foot. I saw the inside of his house clean, empty. He's got stairs. He comes from this place where everything is made of cheese. The houses are made of cheese. The food is made of cheese. The mice and the clothes are made of cheese. Everything drips, it rains, cheese, and and also, um, yeah, he's real nice. He wouldn't let me in his house, but I've got this. And I hand him the extra key. <laughs> and this goes to the house? Yeah, I stole it. It's from his front porch. He kept it under a rock. Real sneaky-like. But I took it, and it's for you now. <laughs> okay. Thanks, I guess. That was... I guess to keep my food. Yes. Nobody's gonna want it. It has your saliva all over it. Rot, rot, cool. Rot, well, see you later, Fang, Fangy Pierce. Miss Fang, Fang Pierce, let, um, ma- ma'am. Portobello. Is that a question? Yeah? Or is that a goodbye? Take some of that food and go give it to Namora and say you're sorry from stealing from her. What? But how can I even look at her? She... Mm, okay, alright. Uh, some of this food. Alright, thanks. Thanks, miss. Alright. Bye. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go say I'm sorry. Okay. You <laughs> you do that. I don't think we have to okay, we need, go we don't through have to that. Walk through that. Yeah. Okay. You you walk up to Namora Spike and you give her some food and you say you're awfully sorry and she scolds you a little bit, but then kind of pats you on the head and then gives you some real food that she cooked up rather than just raw ingredients. Tasty. Mm-hmm. Cool. And while you are eating with everybody else at... So you're sitting there at the big table, which is a little bit too big for you, but you're enjoying your meal with several others. When old man Naden, one of the other homeless folks within Mossflower City, and old man Naden, a weasel who wears a raincoat and a captain's hat all the time, and you have no idea whether or not he actually used to sail or anything, but he has a lot of stories. So you, Portobello, believe every word he's ever said to you ever. Because. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm, I'm into this guy. Yeah, he's my type. So tonight, old man Naden decides to tell the story about Redwall Abbey, the most important story in its history. He tells you the story of (laughs) Matthias the Mouse and how he found the Sword of Martin and killed Clooney the Scourge, the most evil rat to ever sail the Seven Seas. Wow. Okay, Portobello's eyes are huge this whole time. Right. And so he tells you that story and he says that he saw Clooney once forever ago and you're not smart enough to figure out that's physically impossible, but... Other people kind of are, and they start to shrug him off, but you're just sitting there. You and a few of the other, I guess, orphans are probably listening to him. And he tells you all about how Matthias, a lowly healer of the Abbey, rose up and became a great warrior. And he goes on to tell about a few of the other things that Redwall Abbey was known for, specifically its ability to heal people. And then it was a magical place that created healers and warriors alike and that nobody had ever defeated it. But then all of a sudden, it disappeared. And what? people have been searching for it 
for forever now. But nobody knows where it is. That's just like my mom. My mom disappeared. Nobody knows where she is either. Hey, say, Mr. Uh, Naden, sir. Yes, Portobello. Um, do they do they get mums sometimes in Redwall Abbey? They got mums. Why, of course. How else could they continue to have people live in there if mothers do not live in there? Wow. Um, do you think you think my mom might be in there? I don't know, Portobello. Nobody even knows where the Great Redwall Abbey is. Well, no one even knows where the great my mum is either, sir. So that's why. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> I, I guess. Um, um, say, do they also have tater cakes? Oh, Redwall Abbey was known for its great feasts. In fact, the Puddins? culinary center, puddings, great big fish. As know what um, culinaries, culin, culinaries. I know what that is. That's food. It is. We based our culinary center off of Redwall's great feasting <gasps> room. Hey, do, does they have a chef like um our chefy here? Do they have a chef like um Miss Spike over there? They absolutely did. In fact, in the great stories of Redwall, the name Spike comes up so many times. I wouldn't be surprised if if Nomura was a descendant of people that lived there. Hmm. You know, I'd like to be a chef when I grow up. Um, so you don't know where Redwall Abbey is? Nobody all? knows. You know, like, and are there any clues? Because I want to go there. I don't know of any, Portobello, and I'm sorry, but... Oh, right. I wish I could read. Maybe one day you will. Sure, I will one day. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Red Wall, and, and maybe my mum will be there. And I'm going to eat all the puddings I can, I can, at one time. And I'm going to learn how to spell red wall. And, and I'm going to be, I, it's going to be, a, I'm not going to even have to, to, um, steal from people no more. I'm going to be the best hamster that ever was. I think that's a very admirable goal. Young man. Mm, I don't know what admirals mean. It means to be looked up to or respected or I just think it's a very, very, very good idea. Or I'm going to be admirals. All right. Good night. (laughs) And he gets up (laughs) and he goes away. And I'm assuming you go back to your closet and have a very, very good sleep. Yes, I dream dream of um, a large... I don't know what red wall looks like, and I don't listen very well, so I'm, I'm picturing a large red castle. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> With cheese gardens. Mm-hmm.